If you're in the construction business or if you renovate or repair old buildings, you should have already heard about the hazards of working with asbestos or other materials that contain asbestos. If you remove and close or seal off asbestos walls, ceilings, and other surfaces, you may be exposed to airborne asbestos fibers or asbestos dust. Exposure can lead to serious lung diseases, such as asbestosis or cancer, diseases that are disabling and often fatal. No sweat, you say. I just won't breathe this stuff when I see it. If there's some in the air, I'll just hold my breath and get out of there. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. The dust you see isn't the dust that'll hurt you. Small, almost invisible, microscopic fibers like these do the damage. And there's no way for you to tell whether you are breathing them or how many of them you're breathing in. There are safe working guidelines developed by NIOSH for the recognition, evaluation, and control of hazardous exposures to asbestos on the job. Guidelines that can literally save your life. Acting on NIOSH guidelines, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration has developed special standards for controlling work exposures to this substance. OSHA regulations contain several measures that your employer must take to protect your health. These include engineering controls, safe work practices, personal protective equipment, monitoring asbestos in the air, providing medical exams. Engineering controls include ventilation systems with exhaust fans and dust collectors. Enclosure or isolation of asbestos work areas are also important ways to engineer the reduction of hazardous exposures. Safe work practices include good housekeeping, the proper use of engineering controls and personal hygiene, and thorough cleanup at the end of a job. Personal protective equipment and clothing means respirators and coveralls, along with other covering. If you're working with asbestos, you should already have a detailed familiarity with these measures. But you may wonder why it's necessary to monitor the air. NIOSH guidelines and OSHA standards limit the number and size of fibers in the air to which workers may be exposed during a regular work shift. They also say that an employee must never be exposed to more than a certain limit at any one time. Therefore, the industrial hygienist who takes an air sample must first determine the average number of fibers in the air over an eight-hour work shift. Then he must determine the number of fibers in the air at a particular work site. These determinations require both personal monitoring and environmental monitoring. Personal monitoring consists of sampling the air close to your nose and mouth. Environmental monitoring consists of sampling the air in a specific work area, especially where the highest asbestos concentration might be expected. The procedures for both types of monitoring are similar. In personal monitoring, an industrial hygiene professional or technician collects air samples from your breathing zone. This individual may be a company employee or a consultant that your company has hired. Your work shift supervisor will introduce the industrial hygienist to you. This is the sampling equipment the industrial hygienist uses. It consists of a filter to collect air samples, a filter holder, a flexible tube, and a sampling pump to suck air through the filter. Before the industrial hygienist gets to the job site, special filters will be loaded into the filter holders. At the job site, the holder is clipped to your lapel and the pump is clipped to your belt. The tube is used to connect the two. The industrial hygienist turns on the pump. It draws air through the filter which catches both the visible and invisible dust in the air. Because the filter is in your breathing zone, the number and size of the fibers on it gives an idea of what you've inhaled during your shift. While the sample is being collected, the industrial hygienist or technician will check every hour or two to make sure that the sampling equipment is working correctly. If the pump's airflow changes or becomes blocked while you're wearing it, the filter won't accurately show the extent of your exposure. Sometimes you'll stay in the same work area for the entire day with continuous exposure to dust and particles. Other times you may be exposed for short but repeated periods of time during a work shift. In either case, your breathing zone must be monitored during the entire shift to determine the real extent of your exposure to asbestos. Most people want to know, does the sampling go through the lunch hour? May I take off the sampling equipment on a work break? 
If you usually go out for lunch, the sampling equipment can be turned off and removed by the industrial hygiene technician. Thus, the lunch period is not included as part of your work shift. If you eat in a lunch room and the room is free from asbestos fibers, the industrial hygienist may turn off the sampling equipment. However, there are exceptions to this rule, so always check with the industrial hygienist first. Finally, if you bring your lunch to work, you should never eat in work areas where there may be asbestos fibers. You'll be wearing the sampling equipment during your work breaks and visits to offices or restrooms. If you leave your regular work area for an extended period of time to work in an area free from asbestos, the industrial hygienist will have to decide whether or not you should wear the equipment. However, if asbestos-related tasks are a routine part of your job, the sampling will continue throughout your entire shift, including breaks. Finally, at the end of your shift, the industrial hygienist will turn off the sampling pump and write down the total amount of time you wore the sampler. A cap goes over the filter holder and plugs are inserted at both ends to seal the cassette. The cassettes are then sent to a laboratory to be analyzed. Technicians count the number of asbestos fibers collected on the filter and also observe their shape and size. If the samples show there is too much asbestos in the air, your employer must take additional measures to protect you and the people you work with. Environmental monitoring is another way to measure the number of asbestos fibers in the air. Its purpose is to determine the exposure level.